welcome when we talk about solid waste this solid waste comes under different categories plastic waste e waste biomedical waste so what we would discuss today is biomedical waste the biomedical waste management rules the recent one that are formulated and are into action is the 2016 guidelines however the first such rule came in 1998 the second amendment came in 2011 and finally in 2016 right so in 1998 there were 10 categories of biomedical waste that were considered this later reduced to 7 and finally to 4 in 2016 again in 1998 there were uh, the concept where 10000 Uh, beds or more if the hospital has that much uh, extent in that case that region or that hospital had to follow the biomedical waste guidelines however this was later amended in 2016 even a small practicing group even if it is an ayush center is bound to have the application of biomedical waste management also even in the households if there is a biomedical waste generated it has to be segregated separately those are the recent guidelines right again the color coding in 2011 there were five color codings that were demarcated which was black blue red yellow white however in 2016 this was further reduced to four so black was eliminated and you now have blue red yellow and white we'll talk about these color codings as we move forward now let's first understand what are the objectives why this rule is actually into force why is the need for it so this bm bmw waste management that is the biomedical waste management rule has four major objectives first second third and fourth the first talks about reducing the rate of infection because of the biomedical waste which is generated the second one is treating the waste or recycling the waste the third important one is handling the waste so that there are uh, there is a proper care for the workers so ppe is one such protective equipment which is uh, for the healthcare workers and then the fourth one is the safety precautions which are required right now following all this if we talk about overall the hospital waste which is generated 80% of it is general waste 15% is biomedical waste and 5% is hazardous waste so disposal of that hazardous waste we would discuss when we would discuss the class on hazardous waste management the 15% which is biomedical waste we will be discussing in this section hazardous waste would be generated because of radioactivity psycho uh, cytotoxic waste which is mainly with the chemotherapies the radiotherapies right so there the hazardous waste that is generated would be disposed separately we would focus on biomedical waste now if first of all biomedical waste is not disposed of carefully what are the risk there can be chances of infection for the healthcare workers there can be chances of septicemia hepatitis b hepatitis c aids um tuberculosis pneumonia uh, are some of the risk sections that we can understand right again of the total waste that is generated of the total municipal waste that is generated only 1.5 to 2% is what is the bio waste the biomedical waste despite a very small percentage proper disposal is essential as we said the risks associated to it are high and therefore a proper disposal and a proper disposal mechanism is really important to understand here again of the total biomedical waste which is generated of the biomedical waste so here we were talking about the total waste right so understand the difference of the total waste 80% is general waste 15% is biomedical waste now i am talking about this 15% of this 15% 85% is non infectious only 10% is infectious and 5% is hazardous right so this 10 and 5% is the real concern that we have and to actually avoid that this biomedical waste management rules are applicable so what is biomedical waste let's start here 
So biomedical waste is the waste generated from any healthcare institution. It could be a hospital, a clinic, a diagnostic center. Now you might say why in diagnostic center? Syringes, needles, blood samples, lab cultures, all of those would go under biomedical waste. Similarly, not only human beings, animal houses, veterinary hospitals are other centers where you would have the biomedical waste that would be generated. Examples, as I said, used syringe, needles, uh, blood bags, urine collection bags, bandages, glucose bottles, uh, body parts, tissues, all of these would go under the hospital waste. Now to prevent the emergence of any kind of disease, Government of India under the Union Ministry actually laid down the guidelines for the biomedical waste and its implementation. As I said, 1991. Eight was the time where it started but it was all with huge loopholes not properly implemented so all of this was drafted redrafted in 2011 a new guidelines were brought now this 2011 guidelines came into further force and action with 2016 guidelines and in 2011 guidelines We'll first talk about 2011 guidelines right so 2011 guidelines there are 17 rules and six schedules that have been mentioned along with six application forms, right? So 17 rules, six schedules and six application forms. What are the rules? The rules are there should be a short title, application definition, the duty of the occupier, the duty of the operator. Now it's again important. Um, in the 1998, there was no duty of operator which was formulated. However, 2016 has the guidelines for the duty of the operators, uh, the operator's duty, right? Then the responsibility of the authority, treatment, disposal, segregation, packaging, transportation, the authority, the procedure for authorization, the advisory committee, annual reports. Again, annual reports was not mandatory in 1998. It is started formally with 2016 guidelines. Maintenance of the records, any accident, reporting of that accident, for example, if there is a blood spill, if there is a mercury spill, if there is a sputum spill, what are the ways that needs to be handled? We'll discuss this as we move forward. Appeal, a common disposal, incineration sites where uh, the biomedical waste could be actually burned and the liability of the occupier. So these are the 17 rules which had been given under 2011 guidelines. We would not focus into depth of these because these are 2017, uh, 2011 guidelines. We'll be moving with 2016 in more detail as we proceed. So under, under the schedules, so six schedules, uh, the first schedule talks about the categories of bio waste, then the color coding, then it talks about labeling the waste containers, what waste it contains, labeling the transportation, right? Uh, the standards for the treatment. Now this would include incinerator, microwave, deep burial. We'll discuss each of these methods as we proceed. And finally, the list of authorities and their duties. So what's the process? The process is, first of all, there is the hospital waste that is generated. The waste goes through the treatment plant. If it is reusable, it could be used. Then there is in-house segregation based on the color coding, based on the segregation packaging. A common storage point is there at the hospital. Then there is transportation, specific transportation dedicated to biomedical waste, which has to be brought with a specific approved vehicle. Unloading of that has to be done very, very carefully at the central uh, unloading center with the central uh, facility where the biomedical waste is treated. Finally, it is treated. Now the treatment would involve either incineration, autoclaving, shredding. If it is syringes, it would be shred. So we'll talk about each of these as we proceed.